Hello again. I wanted to get back to my talk on resurrection. Uh, got my favorite spell book out. I'm going to go to the Old Testament, uh, see some of the stories that maybe Jesus had read, or at least the gospel writers had read, see if they might have had some influence on some of Jesus' uh, resurrection accounts. Okay, start with 1 Kings, chapter 17, verse 17 through 24. A very familiar uh, story. It sounds very similar to one of Jesus's. Uh, it happened after this that the son of the mistress of the house fell ill. His illness was so severe that in the end he expired. And a woman said to Elijah, What quarrel have have you with me, man of God? Have you come here to bring my sins home to me and to kill my son? Give me your son, he said, and taking him from her lap, he carried him to the upper room where he was staying and laid upon him on the bed. He cried out to Yahweh, Yahweh my God, by killing her son, do you mean to bring grief even to a widow, even to the widow who is looking after me? Another widow's son. Hmm. He stretched himself on the child three times and cried out to Yahweh, Yahweh my God, may the soul of this child, I beg you, come into him again. Yahweh heard Elijah's prayer, and the child's soul, soul came back into his body, and he revived. Elijah took the child brought him down to the, uh, from the upper floor into the house and gave him to his mother. Look, Elijah said, your son is alive. And the woman replied, Now I know you are a man of God, and the word of Yahweh is in your, uh, Yahweh in your mouth is the truth itself. So she was convinced. Uh, okay, whoops, passed it. We have another one over here. This one's really good. Uh, not to be outdone by Elijah, Elisha had to top him. Um, I'm going to cut down to um, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 27 through 35. When she came to the man of God there on the mountain, Elisha, she took hold of his feet. Uh, Gehazi, I think that's how you pronounce it, uh, stepped forward to push her away, but the man of God said, Leave her. There is bitterness in her soul, and Yahweh has hidden it from me. Some prophet. He has not told me. She said, Did I ask my Lord for a son? Did I not say, Don't deceive me? Wow, what a skeptical bunch of people. Yahweh said to Gehazi, Hitch up your clothes and take my staff in your hand and go. If you meet anyone, do not greet them. If anyone greets you, do not answer them. It's kind of like those old spellbook rules, you know, where they, I have newt, you know, and dried mummy dick and all these crazy ingredients that, and when the spell doesn't work, it's because you, you screwed up on the recipe. You know, don't talk to anybody along the way. So if somebody says, hey, good morning, you just screwed up my spell. All right, anyway, sorry to go off on a tangent. You are to stretch out my staff over the child, another magical staff. But the, child, but the child's mother said, As Yahweh lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. Then he stood up and followed her. Gehazi had gone ahead of them and had stretched out the staff over the child, but there was no sound or response. He went back to meet Alicia, and he told him, The child has not woken up, he said. Another sleeping dead person. Hmm. So hard to tell when they're being metaphorical and being literal. <sighs> Alicia then went into the house, and there on the bed lay the child dead. He went in and shut the door and the two of them, uh, on the two of them and prayed to Yahweh. He then climbed on the bed and stretched himself on top of the child, putting his mouth to his mouth, his eyes to his eyes, and his hands to, on his hands. And as he lowered himself, 
onto the child, the child's flesh grew warm. I guess it would. Then he got up and walked to and fro inside the house, and then climbed on the bed again and lowered himself on a child, seven times in all. Then the child sneezed and opened his eyes. You know, this sounds a little like a CPR. You know, compressing the chest, blowing wind into the child. And maybe that explains some of Jesus' resurrections. I mean, he hung out with sailors, fishermen. I mean, how many times did they have to um, pull some drowned guy out and resurrect him? I mean, we don't know. They don't tell us. If they did, they would disguise it as a miracle. Sounds a lot like CPR, the primitive form of it. And then here's this other passage, 2 Kings again. Uh, chapter 13, verse 20. 21. Elisha died and was buried. Bands of Mobiites were making incursions into the country every year. Some people happened to be carrying a man out for burial. At the sight of one of these bands, they flung the man into the tomb of Elisha and made off. The man had no sooner touched the bones of Elisha than he came to life and stood up on his feet. It's a freaking miracle. Unbelievable. Uh... That's pretty much it. I mean, I could have gone into the Witch of Endor, but that's not really a resurrection. That's more of a spirit summoning. Um, and then the rest is like, you know, I mean, like things like uh, in Ezekiel where you see a whole valley of bones reconstructing. And that's in the prophecy area. But there is, um, there's your Old Testament zombies. Uh, and they're not nearly as spectacular when you look at them. I mean, this, there's the child is asleep and all, and brings to mind um, Poe's The Premature Burial, you know, where people even would affix a bell with a string into the coffin because some people have a sleep condition that kind of seems like you're dead, but you wake up and you're in a box under the ground. And uh, So, so much for resurrection. I'm, I'm sorry, but it sounds to me like a form of CPR. I could be wrong, but uh, somebody has a better explanation. Besides magic and miracles, I'd sure love to hear it. Anyway, um, on to the next one, uh, the big one. Uh, the one that without it there is no Christianity. So stay tuned.